Test one, two, three. Cool, so I think uh, we'll give it another 20, 30 seconds and then we'll start. Hi everyone, so I'm uh, Danny, oh, let me just take this, uh, from uh, Cyberducks. It's great to, uh, to meet all of you and talk to some of you. So my talk today is about uh, how diversity is a digital superpower. And uh, a lot of organizations completely ignore uh, diversity and some just have it as a tick box, uh, whereas really it should be diversity of thought where actually thinking in a diverse way, listening to the voices, um, et cetera. Um, and diversity isn't just something that we do for the sake of, uh, of doing. And, and, and really, it has to be a superpower. So what I'm going to do today is introduce CyberDuck, uh, what we do here at CyberDuck, and um, yeah, how we, we leverage diversity internally. So super excited. Um, as you can tell uh, by my accent, I'm from, uh, or some of you may <laughs> recognize the British accent, others may not, which is, which is fine. And equally, I've learned, I've spoken to quite a few people from different countries, and they, they for example, can't recognize different accents, which is really interesting. Um, equally, I couldn't recognize a different Spanish accent, as an example, from one to another. So, so we always have to be open-minded. That's, that's what I find. And um, the talk today is really, this is the agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about you know, what diversity looks like, the bigger picture, and how we can unleash diversity in uh, practice. And thanks for coming. I mean, it looks like that you're an audience that are really interested in this subject and, and passionate about it. So I just wanted to introduce myself. So I'm Danny Bluestone. Um, I'm from Cyberduck. Um, I was born in the 70s and come from a very diverse background myself. So uh, I grew up in two countries. Um, so, so that was a, a really interesting experience, working class uh, background. Um, as a young kid, I kind of fell into computers at the age of probably six, but m at the time my parents couldn't afford to buy a computer. So I had to go to friends' houses basically to, um, to learn about computing. Um, I also, as a child, was not just passionate about computers, computer games and design, but also um, I became a, a DJ at the age of 14, so started my own business, which was quite an unconventional uh, uh, thing to do. And um, yeah, gra gradually um, just got more and more into music and um, computing. So I didn't take like a, a classical route into business, like you know, go to business school, start an agency. I kind of took more of the scenic routes, um, and then eventually ended up doing a um, master's degree in uh, interaction design. Before UX was UX, it wasn't called UX in those days, and and then ended up finishing the degree, working at various organisations, designing everything from CD-ROMs to 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 websites taught myself HTML and, and did a bit of everything, really. Um, and then eventually, in my late 20s, I started um, CyberDuck. Um, this is just a nice little clip of the two little girls. And obviously, coming from a family of boys, having two little girls is, uh, has been a great experience as well. And I think has helped me to become even more diverse in my, in my thinking. Um, uh, yeah, and the CyberDuck, so we're focused on digital uh, transformation through uh, user-centered design and open source technology. So we advocate um, Drupal and Laravel, they're, they're, they're the two main technologies that we really um, promote. But um, you can kind of see it in the photo here, um, and it's not the, the, the sharpest, but basically we have almost 100 people uh, with 25 different mother tongues so it's an extremely diverse uh, agency and from you'll see later but from the very beginning when i started cyberduck in the early years it was an extremely diverse um, organization um, simply because i love having such diverse types of people around me and it, i feel that it fuels me with creativity and inspiration um, Equally, I really enjoy working with the global community of, of Drupal and Laravel evangelists. It's, it's great to, to, to get just such um, inspiration from, from them um, as well. And 
we're fortunate enough to have some amazing clients like the Commonwealth, Bank of England, the European Union, Bosch. We've got some really, really great clients, which again, we really enjoy uh, working with. So, so I'm really here to talk about how we at CyberDuck leverage diversity as a superpower. So first of all, it's been proven by McKinsey, Harvard Business Review, all of the main uh, publications. I won't even bother with stats that diverse teams simply perform better. They generate better results. Um, and, and basically, having an inclusive culture in your, in your workplace is simply better for business. We live in a digital world. So we do everything um, using digital technology, from going on public transport, to traveling, to um, going to banks. Um, there is no... Um, there is no thing today that really digital doesn't touch. Um, and this is why we really need diverse digital teams so we can build more inclusive digital products for users. Because if you have diverse teams, they start to think about the myriad of use cases and, and different um, types of people out there. So this talk is about how we build diverse teams uh, through and, and through empowerment they can then produce um, inclusive design for a myriad of users, resulting in better business outcomes. So essentially, we're talking about a duopoly of strategic forces within your businesses. However, not everyone is there yet. So I'm just going to play a short video uh, to prove my point. Lots of buttons. Oh no, they installed voice recognition technology in us, left the hell in us. Voice recognition technology in a lift in Scotland. You ever tried voice recognition technology? No. They don't do Scottish accents. Eleven. Could you please repeat that? Eleven. Eleven. You need to try an American accent. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. That sounds Irish, not American. What does it? Where in America is that? Dublin? I'm sorry. Could you please repeat that? Try an English accent, right? Eleven! <laughs> Eleven! You for the same part of England as Dick Van Dyke? Please speak slowly and clearly. So as you can see, uh, digital isn't diverse yet. During, during the pandemic, 20% um, of uh, British school children couldn't uh, do things like Google Classroom. They couldn't basically learn online. Why? Because they, their parents couldn't afford computers. In fact, in, in a lot of um, different parts of the UK, the internet speed still isn't fast enough for most um, websites. The UK, uh, in terms of where it is in Europe, it has the slowest broadband speeds in all of Western Europe. So, so we're, still, we're still behind. Um, and it's not just that type of thing. It's, uh, if you consider the fact that at work, um, people from different social economical backgrounds, um, neurodiverse people, particularly in tech, don't feel comfortable for various reasons. Um, and this is based on surveys and, and, and data. So, so, we, so we're still not making people feel equal at work. Um, and a lot of people that work in tech have, uh, that come from diverse backgrounds, have something called the imposter syndrome, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Um, so we're not doing well enough. So just in terms of like the bigger picture and where diversity fits into Pestle. So we at CyberDuck, we use Pestle as part of our business plan to basically analyze the landscape and look at basically um, opportunities, challenges, and risks. So um, I'm not sure how much you follow the UK news. We just have a new uh, government, which is actually the most diverse government in the history of the UK. So, so there's high uh, representation from w women, ethnic minorities in government, but it equally just declared a war on woke. So if you know what woke is, uh, controversial. Um, the royal family, so sadly um, our queen just passed away. That was a, a message that we put out there. But she, uh, well, the royal family has, a, has had a fair share of controversy with, with, um, with diversity as well. So we're in a quite a strange place. In terms of the economy, um, so now, now the current sort of generation that are growing up and starting to go into work are called Generation Z. They're the only generation that have had 24-7 internet access since birth. 
So they see the physical and digital worlds as, as a seamless continuum of um, experiences. Um, and that covers online information, commerce, communication. Everything is, is digital for, the, for, the, for these people. Um, but 75% of disabled users can't complete transactions online. And they, can't I and they can't do the same in physical stores. So you quite often will see somebody in a wheelchair going into a store and just struggling to get around. So online and offline, it's a bad situation still. In fact, um, if you ask a blind user to apply for a job online, you'll see what I'm talking about. They simply can't fill in the forms. The forms, even I struggle with forms, and I'm full, full sighted. A lot of websites, the forms are just simply not good enough, and um, visually impaired uh, people are struggling to apply for jobs, and that, that's not, not right. Equally, um, in uh, the UK, um, and I've recently been into lots of banks, um, physical banks, and walked in, you see a lot of elderly people that are struggling with their apps. They get um, all sorts of security problems. They can't use the apps. And um, the power of attorney requests um, have increased this year in the UK by 60% to give um, relatives autonomy to, to use basically banking apps on behalf of, um, of uh, elderly people. And, and go into kind of branches and, and basically act on their behalf. So we're not in a good place there either. Um, the 2020s is pretty much a um, transformational decade because, because people now completely change their habits in terms of how they work. Most organizations have some type of hybrid policies. Um, and um, Generation Z, um, are basically very, very different to, to, to boomers in a sense that 54% um, of them are attracted to the opposite gender compared to 80% of boomers. So there's obviously a big difference there. Um, and there's some people like Christopher Walk Walken, I'm not sure if you've ever seen this video before, but he is an example of an elderly gentleman who doesn't have a laptop, doesn't have a mobile phone, but equally other elderly people that I know, like my, my mum, for example, she loves her, her gadgets and she's constantly online. <laughs> and then in the world of technology, there's a lot to talk about, but um, in 2022, a lot of crypto investors don't feel safe online. In fact, there's been $2 billion this year of crypto that has been stolen from people's accounts. It's supposed to be secure and, and bulletproof. Um, there's one guy called Stefan Thomas who is a, um, he's got basically two guesses left to figure out a password that unlocks $220 million. So it's, it's pretty crazy. And, and this year, a lot of people have suffered from anxiety, a lot of crypto investors. Um, um, there's even been some suicides as well from people who've lost, I mean, you hear about people in Ukraine that have put their money into crypto and have lost, lost everything. Very sad situation. Um, and then in terms of the environment, 10% uh, of the, um, the world's energy demands now uh, or carbon output are coming out of digital websites and things that we, we produce. So we, we, we need to do better. There, there's over 1.9 trillion websites that exist today. Um, and very few organizations me measure their, their digital footprint. Why is this important uh, for this talk? Well, 66% of the Generation Z agree that environmental concerns should take priority over economic gain. So obviously this generation that are growing up now, they're very diverse in their thinking. They don't necessarily think how we think. Uh, millennials, um, Gen X, Boomers, it's a very different type of, so, so we have to take their views on board. Um, and then obviously, in this example here, even the US government itself is being sued by um, disability pressure groups. For, for, for so, so in this instance here, the um, Ministry of Transport in uh, Illinois was sued because the physical machines, the mobile app, and the website weren't accessible to a lot of users. So, so they had to re spend a lot of money um, put out a press release to show that they're redesigning their their, their digital and physical uh, products. And um, there's lots of unprecedented change in our world, economic turmoil, energy crises, wars, obviously very, very sad that there's wars in, in today's day and age. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and um, 
the digital cultural identity problems, uh, uh, their mental health issues and stress, and obviously all of this ex is exacerbated by um, freedom of speech and kind of the hyper-connected world where literally people can publish anything and it goes viral instantly. Um, people's needs are becoming more and more complex and we need diverse thinkers to solve these challenges. And this is what my, my talk will hopefully prove, uh, that diverse thinkers are the best people to solve the problems of the world. Um, and in Star Trek, which again is a show that I, <laughs> I love, um, people were not only diverse, but they, they were also from different planets. Um, they had universe-type problems in Star Trek, and they brought in all the races and creeds and diverse types to boldly go where no one else has gone before. In the show, characters had to jump out of their comfort zones. So for example, a scientist all of a sudden became captain of the starship. And then you saw that when one of the characters was injured, a younger character had to come in and basically take over um, and do things way outside of what they're used to be doing. So what does diversity look like in, in the natural world? Well, diversity is beautifully ingrained in our world. Um, we would not exist without diversity like and specialities, like ants, for example. They're all part of the same species, but they have different body sizes and, 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 and different um, specialities. It is specialization, um, and it allows ants as a species to do things that they simply would not be able to do as individuals. Um, obviously, the difference between humans and ants, for example, is that we as people, we do not necessarily have to specialize. We have the freedom to do other things as well. That's the difference between us and ants. As you see on this slide, diversity is very much intersectional and, and dynamic. Um, in the human world, we're very much multifaceted. Um, our diversity often intersects. Um, our family status, for example, can evolve, but some things can't, like age and health. As much as I'd love to be 21 again, I can't. Um, I'm 22, I'm joking. Um, many capital cities in the Western world, like London, if, if you take London as an example, 40% of the population identifies coming from an ethnic minority. In the UK, 18% of people have a long-term illness or impairment or disability. And consider that 8% of British people aged 16 to 24 identify today as LGBT. On top of this, 15% of the UK's population is neurodiverse. Now, all the stats that I just threw at you, all of this can exist in one person. It can all exist in one person. And that's the fascinating thing about diversity being so dynamic. So at Cyberduck, um, the, the senior board of directors, we have six of them. Two of them started as in interns. One of them uh, started as a graduate. And the other one was on their second job. Now, why would we start a, a business with such young people? I think it's because they were digital first. They, they were a new generation and they understood where digital was going. Many organizations are reluctant to hire older people. So my mom is a great example of that. At the age of 60, without a university degree, she was made redundant. She had no income coming in. And actually, she was a deprived child. She came from a working class uh, family. So she related to the problems that she saw in the world people without goods, children without nappies, people without clothes. So she started her own uh, business from her dining room table. Um, and essentially what she does is she stops waste going into landfill um, by taking things that are about to be destroyed, like brands, which they tend to destroy goods after it becomes out of fashion, and ships them to communities all over the world, as well as people in the UK, like homeless people. And this, uh, she, she's managed to deliver 37 million pounds worth of goods in eight years, which is incredible. And this proves that people of any age can change lives. Um, so obviously when you're interviewing for someone slightly elderly, consider that. So, so I, I realize the stats here about gender diversity is from 2009. This particular lady works um, for the FT as a software engineer. And when she graduated in 2009, out of the cohorts that she was in, 
120 uh, graduates. There were only four women. Um, recently, she did an interview last year. That stat has barely gone up, and we're in 2022 now. Not much is really changing. And in fact, one of our own um, designers at Cyberduck, she said that the biggest bias she faced getting into tech was actually from her own family. So I think as a society, you know, we need to do more. And obviously me being a parent to young two young girls, I want to change that. So our biases tell us that uh, disabled people cannot do the things that we do, but it's simply incorrect. Our own diversity leads at Cyberduck, we had have a diversity uh, lead called Yaya. He's visually impaired, so he's, bl he's blind. But he's an ex-Paralympian, he's an entrepreneur, and he regularly travels the world to educate organizations on inclusive design. He's an incredible guy. And he's a permanent reminder of the statement, not for us, without us. And what this means is every single user is important. They all need equal access to the information and functionality that, that, that we create. It's only recently that people like Alan Turing, for example, CEO of Apple, has been recognized for the great diverse thinking that he brings to the table. Turing was, was um, one of the many tech LGBT people. So in, the, in an era where, where computing was seen as mathematics, he was thinking about artificial intelligence way before anybody else does. And you, you probably know the history, but he was instrumental during World War II, absolutely instrumental. But what happened? He was prosecuted for being uh, 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 gay uh, at a time when it was illegal. And to this day, I remember about 10 years ago, filling in a questionnaire for a mortgage where I was asked about my sexual preferences in the UK 10 years ago still happens, it's still happening at the moment, whether we like it or not. This is one of the early photos of the Cyberduck team, just to show the diversity that we had. It was a, a house party. Um, so we, we a, lo a lot of the, the talent that we brought in were from other countries. Um, so there was that geographic diversity, um, and it was amazing. There were some challenges, so we, so, so, so we ended up hiring an English teacher. He used to sit down with the team and help them to harness their skills and give them more confidence. And we need to recognize and understand that when we're hiring people from other countries and they, let's say, speak in English, we take it for granted. They, they, they need that support from us. So Will I, Am, Will I Am is a visionary and tech expert. Um, he was one of the people that helped shape the Beats by Dre deal, which was one of the biggest um, hardware, software, tech deals in recent years. However, only 0.9% of European uh, tech founders identify themselves as being black or from an ethnic minority. And only half of them have managed to, to, to receive fund funding and finance that they need to grow their businesses. Why is that? So, so at Cyberduck, we, we, we very much benefited so much from, from the diversity that we have with um, ethnic minorities. So one of the things that we do and I do is every week for the last two years now, I sit down and mentor um, black founders to help them benefit from uh, the networks and knowledge that I have and make sure that they have an equal footing. So fueled by a different way of thinking, neurodiverse people can really unleash superpowers that typical neurotypical people do not have. So with a small uh, campaign, greater pressured governments, global governments and institutions to meet carbon emission targets. Um, within a few weeks, she had 20,000 school children from all over the world joining um, global uh, protests. Why is this relevant? Greta said in her own words that she, she thinks that Asperger's gave her the single-minded determination to take on the world's leaders. So without Asperger's, she wouldn't have been able to do it. A year later, she received the Nobel Prize. Quite often, we do not even know what um, disabilities people have. So at the age of 14, Aaron Schwartz um, helped to develop the RSS um, software that syndicates news across the internet. Within a year, a year later, at the age of 15, he helped to write the code for Creative Commons 
At the age of 19, he was a developer for Reddit, one of the largest social networks in the world. He had a um, hidden um, problem. He had something called ulcerot ulcerotive colitis, which is a serious digestive disorder that wasn't diagnosed. It caused him to be extremely introverted and depressed. And eventually he was prosecuted by the um, FBI for basically trying to open source some of the MIT's content. And they were really um, ran after him. And sadly, he committed suicide. Some of our top software engineers at Cyberduck um, came from very, very different fields. So for example, one of our software engineers used to be a tree surgeon, had a small business, used to meet clients, that gave him some great human skills that allowed him to expand and learn faster. And our ops director used to work at a yachts company. Uh, she applied for a job um, as a project manager at Cyberduck, but initially we rejected her for not being agile enough. Agile, the magic word, right? Um, but we saw the potential in her, and we eventually hired her, and she's done so well. Um, and brought all of these transferable skills. Then there's class diversity. So Alan Sugar's um, entrepreneurial and, and practical retail experience, working in markets, in stalls, eventually led him to start Amstrad Computers, which was one of the biggest success stories in the history of computing. He was a big contrast to Sir uh, Clive Sinclair, who came from a middle upper class background. So we're obviously Amstrad versus Spectrum, if you remember the the 80s but actually th Alan Sugar is a great example of how intersectional diversity be can be he came from a working class Jewish background and is today is considered in the top 1% of society he's quite controversial as well so it just shows you how intersectional things can be and this is again proof of how diversity evolves we don't just remain one part of the diversity spectrum we do evolve as we as we as we mature so this is our, our Cyberduck's model for um, our five pillars of digital inclusion. And um, as you can see here, um, they need to consider physical abilities, mental abilities, technology literacy, so like how adept people are, social economical means, whether people can even afford computing in the first place and internet connectivity. I mean, how often do you even today struggle to load websites on your mobile phone and just think if you're based in Africa or somewhere like that, it, it's terrible. And then there's things like safety and data topics where a lot of people don't feel secure. So you'll build a website, people still don't feel secure. Why? Quite often it, it's just a basic understanding um, of uh, or trauma from the past. So in terms of unleashing diversity in practice, um, I'm going to talk about how you can create a super culture. So first of all, you need to attract a diverse team to the table and you need to give them a seat and you need to keep them there and make sure that you listen to them. Um, so it's not only the leaders talking in meetings and making decisions, but you bring the voices, you hear less. And belonging should happen without barriers, especially in a, in a hybrid remote type of, of business. We need to ensure there's no judgment barriers um, regardless to differences in, in, in location, um, experience, culture, religion, or, 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 or race. Um, to do this at Cyberduck, we, we and, and again, it's challenging in any organization where you're doing everything in a digital way, is we have a company announcement meeting every week where we talk about the opportunities and challenges that we have in the business on, on a kind of commercial level. But equally, we bring in fun things like what movies have you watched this week? Uh, this week, so people get to to basically talk about um, what they're enjoying as well. We also run uh, Friday surveys to see how the team are feeling, how happy they are, um, and equally we set up asynchronous principles to help them with things like um, communicating digitally on Slack and email and things like that. So we, we, all, we all get older and we'll all suffer some sort of situa situational impairment throughout our lives. As an example, many of us will have eye impairments. Um, when, I, when I had um, our first baby, 
I used to be called Dan the One Hand Man because I was constantly walking around trying to feed a baby, run a business with a phone in one hand. It was extremely difficult even navigating on a website, trying to just you know, pay the bills, talk on Slack. It's situational impairment. So there's all sorts of different types of, of personalities out there and there's ways to map them out. I'm sure you've heard of things like Myers-Briggs. Um, there's lots of frameworks out, th uh, uh, out there. But ultimately, what is the ambition? It's to create the best versions of ourselves and, and we use these type of frameworks to help us create better relationships with other personalities. That's, that's what we do. Um, I think the goal is really to avoid like the sharp elbow syndrome, hippos, highest paid um, individuals in the room, um, and basically find ways to engage with the quieter people. Um, so in, in engineering, for example, or software development, um, Drupal, you can end up with quite quiet leaders and, 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 and quiet developers as well. So after I did my own assessment, so we did it in a group, like a management team assessment. And um, so I did it. Some of the tech directors did it. And then the coach came to me and said to me, look, Danny, you need to stop being high level with your, with your, with your directors. You're, you send them two, email, two, two sentence emails and, and you expect them to understand. They want the details, Danny. You can't continue to do that. So it was really good to learn how other people want to communicate, how they want to receive information can't be high level with them anymore. Um, and then there was another instance where I had to call um, someone very senior in the tech team quite urgently. There was, there was a problem with one of um, the Drupal uh, websites. So I had to call, call him. And then when I called him, he basically just um, left the phone on and I could hear he was on a Zoom call. <laughs> so he just left the phone on. But what I found out later is he hates picking up the phone. That's just his style of communication. He doesn't like using the phone. He wants to chat. So I had to join the, um, the Zoom call and chat to him in the chat window. So that's just the intricacies of how and you can find these out um, um, spontaneously. You can find these sorts of things out spontaneously or you can do it through personality mapping. So I think meetings are like flowers. They need to be planted correctly nourished and even questioned on why they need it, wh why they're needed. Some people are allergic to, to flowers and they might be allergic to meetings as well. But these are just some of the principles that um, we have at Cyberduck. Uh, first of all, you need to have a purpose for every single meeting. Do you actually need a meeting in the first place? Um, do the, the hard work first, so don't just come into a meeting for a brainstorm. Get somebody to, to, to write something, to do the deep thinking. Have silent, meet, si silent reading at the beginning of the meeting, five minutes where people get to read a document. It's also good for, for, for uh, people with um, visually impaired people, neurodiverse people. And then the leaders should speak last. The more people you have in a meeting, the more the leaders tend to speak. So try and get the quiet voices. I know it's hard to, to do it, but try and get a good group of people in who are more junior into the meetings and give them a voice to bring in that, that diverse thinking. So hybrid working has really helped my business to hire people from all over the world. The team are from lots and lots of different countries today. And this brings like lots of different circumstances. For example, people will be in different time zones. Some people will be inherently night owls. Other people will be parents. And some people will be carers of pets. So you need to, you need to kind of understand that. Um, also, the reduction in commuting creates lots of opportunities, like more time to study, family time. And it creates a better bond with, with families. So I think we, we as bosses need, need to understand the benefits that hybrid and remote working um, provides. So choice architecture, it, it's kind of, if you Google it, you'll see what it's all about. But it starts with a vision um, and the values that you have in your organization. And then it develops conscious strategies to organize the context in which people make decisions. So, for example, when you plan an office space where people come in, you can get people to sit next to each other, move people around, have things like digital donuts that encourage uh, chance encounters. Um, and it just helps the organization uh, set up for success moving forward. And then, uh, then obviously having 
policies and continual improvement is really, really, um, really, really important. So debiasing de is essentially reducing the amount of bias that we have in our organization. It's a constant, it's a constant uh, job. Um, like I think when I came here, I was biased that everybody understands, for example, what is what an English accent is compared to an American accent. But then I realized that my biases were wrong. Um, so at Cyberduck, we've had lots of issues with bias. And obviously, I'm the first person to put my hand up and say we can always do better. The average age at Cyberduck used to be people in their late 20s. So a lot of our benefits were geared not towards people with families or, or parents, but they were geared towards young single people. So we had to change our, we had to debias ourselves and change our policies. Another thing we do at Cyberduck is have something called One Cool Thing, which is a way to really get to know each other, um, where we nominate every week somebody to talk about um, something, a passion that they have. Um, so this particular um, person here was talking about how he volunteers in art galleries over weekends to build incredible things. W equally, we had uh, one person um, who was talking about triathlons. And funnily enough, uh, within a few weeks, we had to do um, a big pitch to, uh, to a triathlon organization. So it really helped just by learning what people love and, and their passions. Not only does it break down walls, but it actually helps you as an organization. And then the final section, I'm just going to talk about um, probably another um, sort of five minutes, how you can create a power to, do to really deliver inclusive design um, to, to customers. So, it's so at Cyberduck, we have a process to embed um, inclusive design in everything that we do throughout the production lifecycle. So part of our design process is to audit projects for inclusive research accessibility. Uh, and we need to understand that, you know, this is an evolving process. We need to have a sense of humility. There's not, we, we can't do everything by ourselves. Sometimes we have to bring in even more diversity from the outside and bring in specialists as well. But we do things like uh, feature audits, accessibility audits, all sorts of audits to understand how accessible um, products and systems are. So at Cyberduck, we call um, hard skills, technical skills, and soft skills, human skills. I don't like the word soft skills because it kind of diminishes um, the importance. So that's why we call it human skills. Um, and winning teams need both human skills and, and, um, and technical skills. Um, and Drupal success doesn't just sit with the Drupal team uh, to deliver um, great Drupal projects. We need a multifunctional team with diversity. So and what we do is we observe how the relationships and how people work. So for example, one of our back-end um, developers is very introverted, but the front-end developer is very extroverted. And they, as a pair, work extremely well. So what we then do, we recognize that, and we'll make sure that we put them on other projects together, because the dynamics are simply um, fantastic. So earlier I spoke about our, our weekly company announcement meeting. The problem with that meeting is you don't necessarily hear all the voices. That's why we have like smaller town halls for the different department, like the Drupal town hall. So everyone is comfortable in a smaller forum and you get to hear the quieter voices as well. So don't have like a company-wide meeting and expect to hear from everybody in that meeting. Break it down and have smaller forums where everybody has a voice. So in this um, project here, we work with the government's um, civil service fast stream, um, and we had to pass something called government digital service um, assessments. But essentially, the whole point of this project was to create an app to encourage the hiring of diverse uh, civil servants for government. So how do we do it? How do we improve um, the results? We included diverse imagery in the design, so people could see other people that look like them. We also had a, um, obviously part of the goal was not to just attract young people, but people of all ages. We introduced a, a walkthrough tutorial to help the less digi digitally savvy individuals feel at home. And we conformed to WAC WACAG and accessibility guidelines, making it a lot easier to people with impairments. Um, 
in this project here, we, we designed the Commonwealth's design and built on Drupal, the Commonwealth's um, websites. Uh, the goals were to both minimize carbon output because that obviously the Commonwealth of Nations have some incredible um, targets around sustainability. Um, but also make sure that the website loads super quick um, in poor connectivity areas. There's 2.5 billion users, uh, potential users, for this website. Findability of information and, and, and bringing in multiple websites into one Drupal platform was absolutely key. And what really made me happy uh, was to hear that one of the youth ambassadors at the G7 summits found the, the new website transformational. They were able to easily complete and find the information for a course that they probably wouldn't have been able to do without the new websites. And that helped them to um, close the digital divide in, in, in India. So... Sport England is also one of our clients. What you, what you can see here is some accessibility. So you can see sort of some a transcript of Yaya, who's uh, visually impaired, testing both PDFs and HTML um, um, contents. But they're, they're an exemplar of digital transformation. Um, and, and together with them, we help them to re-platform and rework all their content on Drupal. They had tens of thousands of PDFs and HTML pages. And what we did is bring in the accessibility expert early on. That, that's how we were able to achieve these results. A 50% increase in funding for them. And obviously, you can look at the, the other more vanity stats about website traffic. Then um, this is another client um, of Cyberduck, the College of Policing. So I'm not going to read the so slide as it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but at Cyberduck, we're not policemen or policewomen. We're not law enforcement. We're the polar opposites of that. Um, but the, 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 the diversity of our team, them working with the College of Policing, was incredible. Um, and for every subject matter within um, the College of Policing, we had an equal team member from Cyberduck. And despite the knowledge that the client had, Cyberduck was considered the experts. And we got some fantastic feedback from the uh, police force themselves, as well as the client. You can read the testimonial here from uh, Jay, who's, one of, who's uh, one of the senior leaders at um, the college. But basically, he was attributing diversity as driving innovation forward. That's how powerful it is. It drives innovation forward. He says it's one of the most single, most important powers that they have over there is diversity. In this final slide, I just wanted to show you um, why designing for, for diverse scenarios is, is important. Because what you need to consider when you're a designer and developer is people will be in all sorts of personal situations, you know, like a marriage, a divorce, moving home. So this is, is an example here where I was renting a, uh, an apartment temporarily, and I had to pay bills, and I kept getting uh, letters asking me to register. So I did register. Easy peasy, right? But every time I logged in, I got this error message. Something went wrong. Something went wrong. Very, very frustrating. Tried to call um, to call the utility company. I was getting nowhere with it. Took me hours and hours. It shouldn't take hours and hours to pay a bill, should it? And then you start to receive the letters from debt um, collectors saying you're not paying the bills. Eventually, I went into an online uh, chat, and after 45 minutes, managed to figure out what happened. They didn't really consider the service design blueprints that when you register in an address, if somebody else is registered, e.g. the landlord, your account can't be activated. So they had fundamental issues with, um, with the user journeys. And again, it showed no empathy at all uh, towards uh, the user. Zero empathy. So just to summarize, um, consider the case for diversity. But try and understand all the facets of diversity, there is a really big range. Um, recent events in the world make the five pillars of digital inclusion even more important. And I think that because of PESTEL and what's happening just globally, it's moving the, nee the, the needle uh, towards a greater focus on inclusion, really and truly is. Um, and more than ever now, the different generations, they want equality, acceptance, and belonging. We need to hear their voices I, I, as leaders and, ma and managers. We, we truly need to bring them in 
and give them a voice and a seat at the table. And then debias your organization, create choice architectures, um, and then strive for humility and empathy. Like, I'm not satisfied with the amount of diversity that we have. There's so much more that we can do to improve. Nobody's perfect. You just constantly need to improve. So thank you very much. Um, we're also hiring. Um, so if you are interested in joining our organization, feel free to reach out. That's my uh, Twitter handle and the company's uh, Twitter as well. Yeah, I just want to check if uh, there's probably a couple of minutes for, for questions. So I just wanted to see if there's anything in the chat. And if you want to ask a question, um, I'll just pass over the microphone as well. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, there's um, another event from the gentleman. Sorry, what was your name again? Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for this talk. And just to add into all the diversity uh, uh, aspects that you can involve in a team, uh, there's also a lot of career path changes. And I also felt like I have a different degree. I'm not a trained graphic designer. I don't study like um, uh, artificial intelligence. I, I'm and I have to learn it all by myself, and I have to deal with this uh, a bit like as imposter syndrome. Like they will realize I don't study tech, but a lot of people in tech teams are actually come from different career backgrounds. Like m um, I work with a UX designer that study mathematics, other one that comes from architecture, other one that comes from background, from sorry from marketing. So just to add that, and then here comes my question. I see you had a statement that you say uh, most accessible websites uh, in the world, and how do you achieve that on your team? So is a team, each member of your team trained on accessibility, and they are the ones working to deliver this, or do you deal it with a different team that is specialized in accessibility, and they are the ones making the websites accessible? So great, great, great uh, question. And just to answer your question, um, I think it's a combination of things like accessibility training, like with our, with our own UX team, we do um, training with the RNIB, which is the Royal and uh, National Institute of Blind People. So that's one of the ways that we get the training. We've also brought in, we've hired a diversity lead who, who is, again, as I mentioned, um, visually impaired himself. And we use partners that specialize in um, accessibility testing. So we get a, a fusion of, of almost creative diversity to do with inclusive design. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Cool. Uh, thanks. Uh, wonderful talk, by the way. It's nice to, nice to uh, hear someone who has basically s similar opinions to me and similar uh, also came into tech via the scenic route because, yeah. Um, I also wonder, is there anyone from fin else from Finland in the room? Uh, I don't think any of my colleagues attended this. So I am going to, uh, yeah. So I am a non-Finnish speaker in, fin in Finland working as a Drupal consultant. And language requirements make that tricky sometimes. I've been lucky. I've been lucky. It also has to do with I pass as Finnish most of the time. Uh, but one problem the company has is selling selling consultants that don't speak Finnish, in this case, the dominant language. Because that's a, it's an arbitrary requirement, and it's, if you excuse my French, kind of bullshit. So I wonder if you, I mean, obviously the UK is a different country, it's a different situation, but still, have you, do you have like a, a magic phrase or like a magic pitch? How do you pitch your diverse teams to clients? Yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to unpack your 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 question. So, um, is it like you, you're you're struggling to, to kind of pitch a, a a non-Finnish um, native? I mean, it's not me personally who's struggling, yeah. but I would like to come. I would like to tell managers and so on at my company that no, yeah, actually, you can pitch non-Finnish speakers to clients. Yeah, and. Well, 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 I think yeah. it's about selling people, and uh, obviously it's kind of more of a sales um, orientated. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, try, try and promote their, their, their experiences and their, their lived experiences, but also um, 
the fact that they're, they're passionate about working with, with the end client. That, that's what I would say. And, and, and just sell, s s sell them as, as, as diverse individuals with, with lived experiences and the, the, the value that they can bring is actually comparable, if not better. It's a feature, not a bug. Exactly. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I think we're, um, yeah, maybe time for one more. Anyone else? Cool, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>